welcome to Devil's Advocate. I'm Ben. I'm joined by Sean, as always. Hello. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about immortality. Yep. I'd like to be immortal. Yeah? Yeah, I'd go for that. <laughs> I was going to ask you that at the end. <laughs> I'm, I'm sold on it already. Already? Yeah. Yeah. With all the downsides as well. Oh, I don't see a downside. You, you live alone forever? Mm. <laughs> You're like, I didn't like people anyway. Yeah, I'm not a people person as it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, you fall in love multiple times and you watch them slowly de decay and die. Yeah, that is a shitter, but, you know. <laughs> you move on to the next one. <laughs> oh, you know, it's your curse yeah. and your blessing. That's true. That is true. I mean, obviously, I'd only want to be immortal if, like, I lost a limb and grow back. I'm not going around forever with one leg. Oh, okay. So you, you want know. invulnerability as well? Well, I wanted to grow back. Oh, okay. So you want, like, a regenerative sort of healing yeah. factor as well? Yeah. Yeah. I want to be like Wolverine in a sense because I'd volunteer for every single war. Yeah. And just do the, the most dangerous suicide missions and then just like stroll out. Be known as a war hero in every country. Yeah, even though I, I couldn't actually die. And they're like, oh my God, we don't know how that guy's still alive. And like, I do. There'll be um, a statue in every country of you yeah. as a war hero. Yeah, liberating the peoples, man. When in actual fact, you're just going from country to country fighting in all these wars. Yeah, because I can't die. You literally get blown up, and then the enemies find you, and they're like, yeah, will you fight for us? And you're like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Might as well. Or for the other guys, yeah. might as well. Might as well. So let's talk about some of the ways that we could achieve Achieve it. immortality. Eternal life. Eternal life. Yeah. Uploading con your consciousness to a simulation. Yeah. So sort of where Westworld went in season two. Yeah. Spoiler Spoilers. alert, but it is a bit old. You should have seen it by now. Yeah. So they they scanned the people's brains and yeah. then put those that consciousness that that copy of their brain pattern, which presumably involves memories and yeah. personality quirks. I think they did that in Black Mirror as well. I think they did as yeah, well. Yeah, I've not seen it, but I've I've heard it's it's meant to be good. Um, and then they basically just sort of run a computer simulation in your yeah the character in that. It's an which, identical copy, isn't it? Of you yeah. in every way. That could be quite interesting. Imagine them NPCs. Yeah. <laughs> you go into the shop and there's just some guy who's like, how can I help you? And you're like, I'll have that. <laughs> well, you cannot have that. You are not rank 21. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> it's like a leveling system. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, in theory, it'll just be like a, a better version of the world. You probably want the similar world to what you've just come from. Just better. Well, you'd have no war, no disease, no famine, yeah. no death. Yeah. So... Would it actually just be a fucking hellhole? I don't know. It would. It would even need to be the simulation. Would even need to be an exact replica of what we already have, but maybe slightly better. Maybe because mm -hmm. if you made it perfect, then you the, the human brain. They, they said this in the Matrix. We tried making it perfect, but they rejected it. Do you remember that in the Matrix? Yeah, because we define our existence through suffering. Yeah. So you wouldn't be able to make it perfect. You could even make it slightly better or just go full on fantasy and just give them like a Game of Thrones world or something to play around in. That would be pretty sweet. You, they'd even need to know that know that they are a, um, a copy of the original. I don't know if that would work. Well, it wouldn't work, would it? It, it preserves who you were as a person, but it doesn't preserve you because once you, the copy's been made, you can still walk about and go off. And you, That's what happened in that Black Mirror episode, I'm sure it is. They copied them. And then the, the the original just went on their way. What if you get you 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 your body's on the verge of dying? So you're about right? to flatline. You're about to flatline. They scan your brain. Yeah. Stick you into the computer. Yeah. And actually, it's all going to be tits up in there. And there's some evil guy basically managed to take control of that virtual world. Yeah. And you are then immediately enslaved for eternity. That would suck. Because, I mean, you wouldn't need to rest, eat, sleep, because yeah. you're a digital copy. Yeah. You're just literally breaking rocks 24-7. Yeah, that's, see, that's what I don't like about this one, is that it, it isn't really you living forever. It's just it's just a copy of you. Yeah, but that's probably the best we're going to get. Maybe, but it, it's it's not you, is it? You still die. It's just a copy of you, an exact replica, but you still die. You're still gone. I don't think the brain could hack it. You know, I think it no, would just, it would just lose its mind. Yeah, I, I think that it would it would just go be driven mad because the, I don't think your brain can survive without your... Well, your brain can't survive without your body, obviously. Yeah. But let's say that I woke up tomorrow in a different body yeah. and I looked in the mirror. That would freak you out. Of course it would. My brain would probably just fucking shut down. Yeah, well, a lot of people have started having those face transplants. They end up having to have tons of therapy because they're that looking in the mirror. They're looking at a stranger. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the, the, let's face it, though. Those face transplants aren't amazing yet. No, they're not. No, they're not. I mean, 
But um, yeah, my argument is, is it doesn't matter if you're, you, you've been copied and you continue your life on or you, ha- you die and then you've been copied. The original is still going to eventually die. It's yeah. just an exact copy, but it's, it's not you. You're not going to live forever. Your copy's going to live forever. It's still you, though, technically. Yeah, but it's not you, though. It's is how, it? well, strictly speaking, it's how the computer simulation yeah. would yeah, but, expect you to behave in certain situations. Yeah, but it isn't you, though, is it? Because you, you, you didn't go into that computer just a copy of you did. It's as good as damn near at you, though. Yeah, but if that copy was still on the computer and you were just about to die, do you really think you're that? Do you think you're that? Well, that's the thing, you see. Do you not tell the brain yeah. that it's the copy? Yeah, I don't think you could. I don't. That's what I mean. I, I, yeah. I think if you did know, first of all, I think it, it's not. It's never going to be you. It's literally you've just you know when you copy and paste a file. Yeah. That original file still exists. Yeah. And just because they're exactly the same doesn't mean that second file is the first file. Well, that second file can also become corrupted quite easily. Yeah, it can. But that that doesn't mean that it's the first file. The first file always existed. And if you delete the first file, it doesn't make the second file the first file. It makes it a replica of the file, doesn't it? It does. So it's just an exact replica. But it's not the original file. The original file's in your in your waste bin. What if you get corrupted? Then and you, you just start you killing become, people. You become well, yeah, but they're virtual people, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I know, but it should be pretty. Pretty fucking grim dark, wouldn't I, it? I think as it goes for the copy, all you can really do is tell it that it's the original version and n- not let it know that it's dead. Yeah, because the second I think you said you're dead. So what you do is you pick some time in the youth, in their memories, one of their most favourite memories in their 20s or their 19, and you drop them there. You, you age them backwards in terms of appearance because you'd be able to do that. Yeah. And you just let them continue from there. Yeah, pretty much. And then when they die in the virtual world, it just resets to a, a, a similar memory because they might make different memories the second go around because you can drop in different people, you can create it, but you can't let them know that they're a copy. They know they're a copy. Like you just said, it'll break them. It'll break their mind and then it'll break their copy. How would it work with um, things like pain and pleasure? Still let that you happen. still get in that? Yeah, still let all that so, happen. I mean, my reality is still defined by the fact that I can't just run out into traffic in this virtual world. Yeah, you die and you start again. It just pick, you just basically pick somewhere, like, say, 18, 19. Say you're at a really cool party and you're having a great time. You're like, this is the best time of my life. Drops you there. But the, the AI system is that intricate that it basically gives you different scenarios each time. So that time you may be you're at that party. And in real, in real life, the first time, you just went home. But then, then this version, you bump into a really pretty girl, you get a number, and then you end up get, getting with that girl and so on. And then another version, maybe you bump into a band member, and you, the band member's like, oh, can you sing? And then you're like, yeah, I can a little bit. And then maybe you become a famous rock star. Each yeah. time, it's slightly different. It's like the butterfly effect. I like that. And you just keep going, and then your life ends, and then it resets you. Because if you went on forever, and then you're like, well, why am I living forever? Why am I not aging What's going on with this world? You start asking questions. That's when the file would start yeah. getting corrupt. But if you, you let it live its life cycle and then you reset it, it but again, it's just basically you, what, it, the people that would create it would just be watching you re- replicate and repeat yourself. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like, um, I think yeah. Mike said this when he guessed it, that the simulation theory is, is a lot of scientists think that it's actually highly likely to be true. Yeah. And some advanced civilization has basically just decided to, They've watched a species, say the human race, and they've gone, oh, let's make exact copies of them and see how they would react on what our if, supercomputer. What if they wiped us out and just did this for the lols? Yeah, that's, so we could all literally... We wouldn't even know. Yeah, they could have literally, at some point in time, scanned us all, destroyed our planet, and we're just simulations that keep re- re- going over and over again. So when we die in like 50 years' time, we'll reset and do things slightly different. And it's just, it's like TV for them. It's like advanced alien TV. Yeah, yeah. bastards. <laughs> But yeah, I don't like that idea because I don't think that I don't feel like I'm immortal. I feel like my clones are mortal and I've died. <laughs> mm. My copy even is immortal. Yeah, but you wouldn't know. Yeah, ignorance is bliss. That's true. Um, leading on to that bit is the robot body then. Yeah. So you would have your consciousness put into a virtually indestructible robot body that you could dial up its responses or dial down its responses. That'd be pretty. You cool. could dial down the pain you feel because you haven't got nerves. Yeah. You've got uh, sensors yeah but so you could just turn them sensors off stick your hand into lava yeah or you could dial it right up where the air is hurting you yeah you know so you could turn up your pain and pleasure receptors that's it yeah. and you could end up having a, a 
technology went on, you could end up having such a convincing human body that it looks like you have your original body. That's it. It's just you can control it better. You just literally, you could have a remote control in your pocket. You can have an app on your phone. Yeah, literally. <laughs> mm. Fancy being pain resistant today. You can probably control it with your mind. What about like uploading, up, up, upping your intelligence, getting yeah. a, a data square into, it could be into like, your brain? It could be like Jarvis from Iron Man, couldn't it? You could literally yeah. just speak to yourself and there'd be an AI in your brain. It'd be like Jarvis. Turn up to a pain receptor to level 10. Yeah. And literally, that would be it. Yeah, or you could just go, you know what? Um, oh, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I lost it then. Okay. You lost um, it. <laughs> but yeah, again, I think the problem is that the brain, if it knew you were a robot body, um, but then I, I don't, you couldn't, I don't think you, you can't just stick a brain in a robot body. Because the brain himself is going to decay and get old and get senile. Yeah, unless you put some sort of future tech preservative inside the robotic skull to kind of keep the brain. But again, brain degenerative disorders would probably take over after a while. Of course, they would with age. Yeah, so even though you could preserve it and keep the brain ticking along, it would degrade and you'd probably get some sort of Yeah, your neural pathways are going to start. Yeah, internally. Because we're not supposed to go for that long. No, so all you could really do is create an AI, like a a, a robotic brain that you upload it to, like a a chip. Yeah, would you, you'd have to have a synthetic brain. Yeah, like... um, Which you could still make out of Like altered carbon, isn't it? But instead of using a body, you're using a, a machine. You, you put yeah. the, the memory in the stack, and then you put that into the machine body. That's right. Yeah. Um, again, like the altered carbon thing, let's move on to that. Yeah. Um, I think that's great. Just swap into a new body? Yeah, you swap into a new body. Yeah. Simple. Where do these bodies come from? Are they like clones? or? Yeah, they'd be like grown, yeah. wouldn't they? Yeah, you just grow them from genetic material that you kind of throw together, and then you just chuck that chip in. Well, if you think, I don't know, maybe some kind of sperm and egg donor kind yeah. of scenario. I don't so know. Just gr- grow loads yeah, of grow one in vitro, but then again, you, you probably haven't... grow them rapidly as well, to be fair. Yeah, I you? don't know how you not put consciousness into that, though. I don't know how you get an empty shell. Yeah, that's an, an interesting thought, isn't it? How you get in. Well, you just don't wake it up. No, I guess not. But you still, surely. As you're doing stuff in that body and the neurons are firing, yeah, that that shell is that gonna is that brain gonna develop its own consciousness? Well, I would imagine you just when you're growing it, you just make sure that there's no brain activity. You keep the brain activity switched off, yeah, and then you wake it up when you put the stack in. So it's almost like it sparks awake once you put the stack in. Before then, it's not it's not active. No. So you grow the body, but you keep you, you use some sort of a dampener or something to stop those brain waves from from moving at all and set the stacks and it just it kicks up would you experiment with what, who you were would you like you know what i'm gonna be a, i'm gonna be a black dude this week <laughs> i don't think i'd care no? to be fair i think i'd like to be a man and i think that goes back to what you said about um not being able to comprehend being in it out of your body i think you'd need to if you were you've always lived your life as a man and you identify as a man Putting your, your consciousness into a female body would be very confusing. It would, because you wouldn't know what the fucking hell to do. Or how you feel, because you've yeah. got all those hormones and things yeah. that you're not used to. I mean, I suppose if you could do it for a day, see what it's like. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to be permanent. No. I think both of those ideas, I, I don't like either of them, to be fair, being put into the machine or or put into like a stack and then put into a, a clone body. I'd rather have the memory stack and the clone body than the machine body. Would you really? Yeah. Even though the machine body gives you super strength. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I think that you still got some semblance of humanity at that. It, it, yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that you, you're becoming immortal. Yeah. But the point of immortality is surely to stay human. human. Otherwise you're not immortal anymore. You're well, just a machine. Well, that's it. You're not, you're not you, are you? Yeah. I mean, there's a copy of your higher brain function. So you, def- you define being human as still being, being, being a squishy meat bag? Yeah. See, I, I, again, just think you're a copy at that point. The original still dies. So when I watched, I think I said that to you when I watched Altered Carbon, the original dies at that point. And you was like, well, yeah, it does die, but he, the original's gone, but there's an exact replica, so surely that's still you. And... I, I, I literally, I kind of had to spoil season two for you. I don't think you're ever going to watch it anyway. But I think I've watched part of it. In season two... Spoiler alert. Yeah, if you've not seen Alter Carbon, it got cancelled anyway after season two. It reveals that there's... I think it's season two anyway. It reveals that um, there's two two of him. There's two copies of him. 
One yeah. that they've carried on using as a military sort of hitman, sort of still ruthless, still thinks the same way. And then the other, the one we've been following for all this time, who's learned there's a better way. And they end up fighting and he has to basically kill himself. Wow. So it, it's almost like, and they, they, they literally, while they're having a fight, they're like, neither of us are the real version. We both, we both know that we, we died. We died long ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's, so, um, but is that a trade off for living that long? Um, I don't think it's a trade off. It just means that you don't really achieve immortality, do you? Part, oh, no, I suppose part of you does. Yeah. The, Your memories do, if nothing else. To everyone else, you achieve immortality, but to the individual that died, you didn't achieve immortality. It would be quite weird going to visit your own grave. It would be. <laughs> You'd be like, mm. oh, everybody that dies, I want to give it a proper burial. Yeah. It's it's little things, though, isn't it? Like um, if you'd been with someone your entire life and they and they they sort of cloned your body, if you were rich enough like an auto car and you could have an exact replica. Where it updates every 15 minutes yeah. as well. So, like, you could, yeah. nice. so you could literally have an exact replica and live over up to 15 minutes of your death. But you can guarantee if you if that was the first time you did that and you went and saw saw your partner, your wife, your husband, whatever, they would they would still think you weren't you. There would be a part of them because they'd see your corpse on that table, then they'd see you and you'd give them a hug. Yeah, but they would, like, but it's not like you're just showing up. Yeah. I mean, like this technology is about everybody knows what it is. Yeah. So it's like, oh, you know, Ben's um, Ben's invest his, his life insurance is going to pay out for a stack for yeah. him. Yeah. And a new body. Yeah. And it's like so they would expect it. Yeah. Yeah, but they, I think there would be some sort of some sort of human sort of wiring in them that would go, that's not them, that's just yeah, a copy. Yeah, there might be a little bit of revulsion, in fact, mm -hmm. um, for, for people who obviously had the the new body and yeah. the people that haven't. Yeah. I mean, in families, I mean, if I rocked up to my, my house in, in a body that's 16 year, a 20 year old Ben, yeah. except he's more ripped. Yeah. Because you could ask for that. Because I could ask for that. Yeah. And I could be agile. I could even be a fantastic sportsman or yeah. trained in various forms of killing. Yeah. Probably go for that one. <laughs> um, then, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Boom, I'd do it. But well, surely my, all, my all parents would go, hmm. Yeah. That's not you, though, is it? Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. The second you can control what your what body you put into or how your body is made. So they do that in Alpha Carbon. They give them a military-grade body yeah. in Season 2. It's completely like done up. It's stronger, faster than the average person. It's everything. It's the perfect sort of. He can even he can even bring guns to him just by lifting his hands up. They sure. so like they like magnetize, so they they come to his his sort of calling. And it's like oh the gun master. Yeah, and it's almost like well that's not you because you couldn't do any of that that's before. It. I don't want superpowers. Yeah, I'd just be like maybe the peak of human conditioning. <laughs> but again, that's not you. You'd go home, you'd be exactly the same personality-wise, but you wouldn't look the same, you wouldn't act the same, and the reason why is because things will change about you. Yeah, although it would be interesting to see how long I could wipe out that perfect body. And it would it would change your sort of personality as well. Of course it would, because, because I'm going to be strutting around thinking I'm the dog's bar. Yeah, so then you would you would flirt with more women, you'd be more confident. Um, Have more fights. Yeah. I don't want to take shit off you. Yeah, which would, over time, because you're 20 now, so you've gone back to sort of 17, Ah, but my years. brain's still the same. Yeah. My, but... my, my, my experiences and my yeah. my past experiences and my, 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 my personality is the same, with that, but then again, it's going to change. It's going to change, yeah, because our personalities are forever changing. You're not the man you were 20 years ago. No, no, and and that would that would hold true again now. So if you're talking, you've been in that new body for 17 years. Would you end up becoming the same person, or would you be a completely different person? Chances are, 37 year old second Ben would be a completely different version to 37 year old current Ben. Yeah, because you've got a second chance at youth. You've got a second chance. You've just said you want you wanted to sort of not military grade, but a, a better version of, of 20 year old Ben. Yeah. So already that's give you a head start in the Ben currently. That's it. So that gives you different choices, and that develops you as a different person. I certainly sort out my gammy knee. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> I've got old injuries that that they, those things define you. You take those away, you give yourself something new. You're going to change as a person. Yeah, and you're going to start doing loads of crazy shit because you know that. Yeah. Well, your stacks updating every 15 minutes. What's it matter? What does it matter? So the you can literally do what you want, and it just it, it basically the version of you that cared about you, that cared about your life, that cared about your existence, cared about the people around you, would completely and utterly change, and that new version of you wouldn't be you, because you'd be like, well, life is meaningless. 
I can do what I want. And if I die, I'll come back again. I think I still quite enjoy it. Well, all those people in, in Altered Carbon, they, they, they seem broken. Or even, even the ones that seem to enjoy it, they seem broken. The one guy, he literally says, um, he, he, what did he say? He says, every time we come back, we lose a piece of ourselves until eventually there will be nothing left. Mm, I'm willing to wait, take that trade off. <laughs> and in the end, he actually makes it so that when they kill him, he doesn't. Well, he does. He just doesn't want to come back. He's like, don't spin me back up, because he's 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 had enough. Because he's like a thousand years old. I'd go for that. Would you really? Yeah, yeah. I don't think I like that idea. To be fair. All right then. Seems so, flawed. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, I I personally think that I would. I'd, then again, who knows? I mean, after a thousand years, it might get a bit boring. Yeah. But it wouldn't. We're be, not supposed to be here for that yeah. long. It wouldn't be you anyway. Be but then again. I'd, i mix it up, like, you know, I might spend a week as a woman, I might, yeah. might be a black guy for a bit, might be a Chinese <laughs> guy for a bit, you know, might be a fat bloke for a bit, might be a yeah. ripped bloke for a bit, I'd change it up. But again, that wouldn't be you, that'd be your copies. Yeah, but I, I've always looked at, like, you know, a bit of acting, a bit of yeah. performance, so I could get into that. Yeah, but you wouldn't get into any of it, your copy would, you'd be gone. You know, my brain's still going, though, my memories, what makes me me is still there. Yeah, I guess. It's just a copy of it, but yeah. I mean, yeah, it's as good as it's going to get. Yeah. But you won't experience any of that. You'll be gone. You'll be dead and gone. Yeah, but what's this? This this body that you see before you, this yeah. Adonis-like temple, <laughs> yeah. is, you know, it's just a shell. Yeah. What makes me me is in my head. Yeah, but yeah, but you're not transferring that. You're copying that. Well, that's, yeah. Because there isn't any way of transferring it. You can only copy it. What if they come up with a way of transferring it? So that basically, when it's trans, so if you're still alive, it basically transfers your mind and then just hollows you out. Yeah. So there's nothing left, and they literally say, but then that would confirm the existence of a soul because you'd have to be able to transfer the energy into another into another place. So that would mean that the physical manifestation of what makes you you would would have to exist like a soul. No oh, cack. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise they can't. They just they all the best they could do is copy it. Because what are they extracting otherwise? Your memories, and if they extract your memories, then they're just making a copy. They're not. They're not. They need to extract something physical. So they'd have to identify where the soul is, if the soul exists, and extract it. Well, that's digital, isn't it? Digitalized, a digital soul. A digital soul. Digital soul. It's just a copy, then. I'm afraid you just mm. you just a photocopy, then. <laughs> well, photocopies can be just as good as the original. <laughs> Um, let's have something slightly. Oh, I'm better. not saying they wouldn't be. Are they? They would be better. It's just it wouldn't be you. You wouldn't experience. It. I, I experience would think it. it would be me, and that's good enough. No, the copy would think it'd be you. You'd yeah. be gone. The copy is thinking I'm the original. So yeah. <laughs> no, because uh, it would know. It would know it was a copy. Unless you erased its memory. I'd erase that part of the memory. Well, you wouldn't, because you'd be gone. <laughs> I'd have it written into the programming before you die. Yeah. <laughs> Right, uh, what's next? Okay, that's a more fun one. Um, Holy Grail. Holy Grail. Yeah. Indiana Jones and the, yeah. and the um, Last Crusade. Going a little bit more occulty now. Yeah, well, I like the occult. Yeah. You know that. Um, Holy Grail. Okay, so what's Drinking that from the Cup of Christ. Yeah. Um, bear in mind, I only have the Raiders of the Lost Ark to go on. Not Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Last Crusade to go on. But you're not religious, and that would confirm religion. <laughs> well, yeah, it would, but yeah. at the same time, I'm always, I'm not religious. Mm -hmm. But if, all of a sudden, Jesus rocked up outside on a horse. You believe him then? I'd be like, well, <clears throat> bugger me, I got that wrong, <laughs> didn't I? Let's go, Jesus. Let's go. Let's go hang out. <laughs> you know. Here's a joint. <laughs> <laughs> he just probably give me a joint. He probably, oh, okay, so Jesus is a stoner. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> he's got long hair and he wears a toga, mate. What else do you want? And sandals. <laughs> and sandals, of course, he's a stoner. And all, all year round, he wears sandals. Exactly. <laughs> um... You know, so it's supposedly the cup that Christ drank from, and yeah. at the Last Supper, sorry, yeah. and also in some kind of weird twist, maybe the cup that caught the blood from the spear that pierced his side, yeah, as he was on the cross, the centurion Longinus. But I'm going to put him out his misery a bit. Stabbed him with the spear yeah. into the side. Out came blood and water. For some reason, someone was there with this cup to catch it all. Why did they catch it all? No, oh, it's Jesus, isn't it? She's just got like an alcoholic friend. <laughs> She's always there drinking it, from this cup. Wine is blood is wine, mate. Yeah. Um. And apparently that then can it gained all sorts of magic powers. Yeah. From immortality to even winning battles, all sorts. Yeah. So it was, I mean, in in the example 
um, Last Crusade. Sean Connery is laying on the floor. I don't want to say spoiler alert, but that film came out in 1990-something. Yeah, yeah. If it's a, it's before 2000. If it's before 2010, just, just say yeah. it. They should have watched you know, it at that point. And in all fairness, it is the best Indiana Jones film. Yeah. In my humble opinion. Then it's Raiders. Yeah. Then Temple of Doom. Yeah. And then that god-awful piece of shit that was Crystal Skull. Yeah. And that was a god awful piece of shit. I never even made it through that. I don't movie. even think I watched that. I one. never made it through it. Is that the one that was like 10 or 20 years later? Yeah. And it's got that fucking idiot, uh, trans- Sheila LaBeouf, who was a terrible actor. Sheila LaBeouf. Yeah. Awful. I've not, just, I've not seen it. Yeah. So you don't want to watch it. It's awful. <laughs> um, but yeah. So something like that, something like that, some kind of talisman of the gods. So you drink that, or is there any if other. If you drink water, you can drink water out of it. Yeah. So and it will give you immortality. So you're talking about some sort of god relic which basically makes you immortal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's a cool idea. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't I don't think it exists. But, well, no, uh, ch- chances are it doesn't. But I'd definitely sign up for that, yeah. Because then it's you. You're, you're going to live forever. Yeah, yeah. go for that. Well, you're not gonna live forever, but you're gonna live for thousands of years. Well, in the in the state, let's go use the movie as a reference. Um, the yeah. the knight who's there, been guarding this since the, like the third crusade. He's like he's aged, yeah, but he's still alive. Yeah, yeah, you know, he looks like 70, 80 years old, but he's still alive. Yeah, I mean he's been around, he's been there for a thousand years. He, oh, okay, yeah. he looks pretty good for a thousand years because he keeps drinking from it. So he lets himself keep... age a little bit, then he drinks from mm. it again. Yeah, maybe to keep a sense of perspective. Yeah. Well, you'd still want to age a little bit, wouldn't you? Well, yeah. No, no, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> Behold the ravages of time. Yeah, you want to live no, forever. I want to, I want to look this good forever. <laughs> <laughs> Should have said that 10 years ago, man. <laughs> it's a bit late now. Yeah, 10 years The ravages of time have hit you already. <laughs> I have, and I look quite good for my age. Yeah, you look good for a 45-year-old man. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, I may have lost some hair. Yeah. Right, But there are guys my age yeah. who look a lot worse than me. Yeah. I mean, they're grey. Yeah. Um, all their hair is gone. I still have some. Yeah. Um, and you know, but they've got wrinkles and bags, yeah. and I don't have any of that because I sleep yeah. a lot. Well, <laughs> some might say too much. Some might say too much, but I really enjoy it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah you look good for you look good for a forty-five year old man. I'm not forty-five. <laughs> <laughs> right, should we move on? Yeah. So, all right, then, um, let's do nanobots. Nanobot so, technology. So you would be getting older, yeah. and they would inject you with these nanobots that yeah. would then basically repair your aging cells from the inside of the inside of you. Yeah. They'd Get stop away you. any disease. Yeah, they'd stop everything, wouldn't they? Disease, illness, everything. Yeah. yeah, I like that idea. That's that's probably my only way that I'd like to kind of, I wouldn't say immortal, but live for a very, very long time. Yeah. That's not, is that going to make, because we are built to fail. Yeah. As, as a, 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 an organic machine, we yeah. are built to fail. Yeah. Um, obviously, we could probably knock us maybe, I don't know, 100 years on. Yeah. Maybe if you combine that with like rejuvenative therapies, so you have your skin skin peels and, you know, leave you with smoother skin, so you take it the wrinkles and you have Botox plastic surgeries i mean look at Cher. yeah she's like 70 something i mean all right she still looks about 50 odd but she looks a good a good 50. to be fair if we had nanobot technology to that level where we could inject and it could repair ourselves it could repair everything so the technology the, it would be self-replicating so the te- the nanobots would replicate themselves and there would be that many in your body you'd be mostly nanobots i'm always driven by when i think of nanobots i always think of red dwarf no you haven't seen red dwarf it's in a few episodes in my youth well, there's an episode, it's, I think it's one of the latest seasons, it might be season eight, the end yeah. of season eight, um, Lister, the last human alive, loses mm-hmm. his arm. He has mm-hmm. to cut his arm off because he's got like a virus in there. Yeah. And he's like, oh, he's, he's really depressed. And they find the nan, Crichton, who's the android, they find his repair nanobots mm. and they inject him with it. Yeah. But because the nanobots have been hiding for ages and they're, they're really desperate to make up for the fact they've been hiding. Yeah. They not only grow his arm, but they also make him in like his bodybuilder stats. <laughs> and they're like, no, I want you to just, you know, before you look in the mirror, you just remember the nanobots are kind of apologizing to you. <laughs> <laughs> so not only has he got his arm, he's just ripped to fuck. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, that's the thing. The nanobot bot technology would be that incredible. It would keep you alive. You'd look amazing. You'd never get ill. If you wanted to, if you were getting a little chubby, you could literally just, like you said, like an app on your phone, Make me ten percent like thinner, or make me five percent less body fat. Yeah, you got to sleep, wake up, boom. Yeah, and the nanobots would get to work eating the fat in your body, or 
he'd be like, oh, we've no, it'd be like a notification on your phone. Oh, we noticed that you have cancer. Okay, we'll eat the cancer. Fuck me, what a terrible thing to get. Bing, bing. Yeah, but he would just be like, would you? Oh, want... hello. Oh, they're my nanobots. Yeah. You have cancer. Oh, fuck me. Yeah, but the nanobots then could, I mean, you could make... Beginning it... cleanup. Yeah, that's what it would do. It would It'd just... still be like, oh, fuck me. Yeah, it would just automatically do cleanup. It would just... I don't want to know. Yeah. I'm turning off notifications for that. But as for the age and, like, your face and stuff, it would just regenerate the cells on your face. It would be underneath your skin working on everything. So it, you would basically be the perfect version of yourself and you'd live, well, for as long as the nanobots were. The only problem is, is... You still only got a finite amount of biological material to work with, though. Yeah, but your cells w- eventually are going to start slowing down. Your body's going to start slowing down because that's what happens as you get older. Yeah, but those cells they won't know because they just re- they just repair the cell. They just take the cell, they make it back into what it was, and then they just put it back out again. That is mind blowing. So what happens in your body is your cells slowly degrade, don't they? But they would stop that from happening before it happened. Yeah. So you basically, if you had them now, you just wouldn't age past where you, you age now. But there's no reason why with technological advances that they couldn't get to the point where they aged you backwards. So they repaired the cells and even even learned how to create cells themselves. Well, yeah. But then they've also got this sort of millions upon millions of tiny little robots in me that I'm hoping aren't going to turn against me That's at some point. That's a problem. Point. The virus, they could choose to take because they Will are... They hack it? What yeah. if someone hacks my nanobots? Somebody could hack it. There could be a virus that could literally make you ill, and then you're ill via some sort of machine virus. Techno virus. Techno virus. So they techno diseases could be the new thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You you could literally the machine could take over your body, could take over your mind because it's it's in everywhere. So you've got to trust that that's never going to try and just completely eat your brain and and just take over. Well, that's it. What if they become conscious and decide they 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 think I'm doing a terrible job of looking after my body yeah. and take over it anyway? Which is what they should have done in Terminator. It would have saved them all the war. They could have just take took over the humans from in, inside. Yeah. And then they wouldn't have had to send all the Terminators after the humans. No, well, that was their like latter plan, wasn't it? You know. Yeah. They could have just they could have just released nanotechnology into the drinking water. I don't think they had it at the time. The machines yeah. so they just got later. They could have di- they could have disappeared and made the humans thought they'd won and then just put that in the drinking water. Yeah, that's would true. have ended the ended the war. Well, it's a good job you aren't working for Skynet. I know. Yeah, <laughs> actually, it is. speaking of hacking stuff. Yeah, I I was on break today at work and I was scrolling yeah. through Facebook looking at news stuff for for cutting the ball for the weekend. Yeah, and I came across this story. Yeah. Where basically nowadays um, you can get for uh, DS relationships, dom sub relationship, smart chastity belts. <laughs> so they're controlled by an app on the phone. Yeah. So your whoever puts it on you is like can go. Mm, I think you can unlock that in. Yeah. Let's put a timer on it, or you just go Boop, and, and unlock it. Apparently, I like how be... you're like. I accidentally air quotes found this. <laughs> it came up in the news. Yeah, of course, of course. Carry on. Well, I'm not wearing a chastity belt, believe me. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Continue with your story. What you and Mike do just before, before the podcast. What you guys, He's be the one in the belt, trust me. What you guys do before your podcast is totally up to you. Um, No judgment here. Oh, well, that's good. Because it doesn't <laughs> happen. But, sure, sure. <laughs> you're saying, and it was as an alert had been put out. We hacked. Yeah. And they can hack it so it can't be opened. Jeez. <laughs> you're like, no. Yeah, so it's stuck there forever. <laughs> Yeah, there's there is a few problems with the nanotechnology. Stuff. Anything that's, I mean, are they going to be connected to the internet is an issue. I don't think they should be, just because no. people could hack your body. That's it. Yeah. But what if someone gets hold of your phone and you starts have to, pissing around with you it? You have to go to some sort of mechanic doctor that updates them manually. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to go to the internet. But then his computer couldn't be connected to the internet. No, his machine would have to be disconnected from yeah. all. Yeah. And then you've also got the problem as well is if it is warfare or anything, then stuff like EMPs would be able to take out entire groups of soldiers. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Maybe you only get the nanobots at a certain age. Though, yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> like when you start hitting 40, they start giving you the nanobots. Yeah, yeah. That could work. Yeah. I like the idea, though. Um, that's probably going to be the future. It's my preferred idea. I don't like the idea of being copied. It's certainly the best one because yeah. at least you remain you. You, yeah. It's just a. It's just a they're basically just sort of hyper. Um, well, they're making your 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 body's repair system basically just work overtime, aren't they? They're taking over. Yeah. And to a point where. Well, that's what happens. I think it's uh, something like twenty-seven or twenty-eight, or maybe even twenty-nine. It's one of the late twenties. Uh, the reason why we 
kind of look handsome or beautiful and youthful until I like late twenties for most people is because that's when the body or on average, the body then is re still repairing up, up till then still repairing cells quicker than they're dying. Yeah. Then after that, the body starts giving out. And then from then on, so you're 30, 35 and stuff, the cells repair slower than, than they're dying. Yeah, and I mean, that's why the aging process starts. And every 10 years, somebody looks like, like a lot older. I mean, if you think, you know, really, I mean, let's face it, it's only been the last, this, well, last, from what, 19, let's say 1950, 1960, where people aren't dying in their 30s. Yeah. Well, actually, that's, that's, that's far too late. Yeah. But even like in the, you know, turn of the century, turn of the 1900s, people were still dying at 40. Yeah, the average lifespan probably would have been 50, wouldn't it? 50, 50 60, 60, maybe, something yeah. like that. But well, with all of the... Especially if you lived in a city, it'd be yeah, even less. All the harsh sort of pollution. Yeah, harsh lifestyles, coal miners in, in your smaller towns. Our town was a coal miner yeah, town. Yeah. So, I mean, you're down the down pit breathing in coal dust every day. Chances are your lungs are going to yeah. give out. Pollu there was no restrictions on pollution, no. so there was a ton of black smoke in every factory kicking out. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, even my dad, who was born in 1947, can remember the, the pea super fogs we yeah. used to get where everyone's coal fire we belching out smoke yeah. well that's and what... that mixed with the fog yeah. and he said literally you couldn't see your hand in front yeah. of your face yeah but after the industrial revolution there was factories popping up everywhere yeah. and they, there was no regulations on on getting rid of the uh sort of the smog. pollution yeah the smog we'll call like, it the best... they safely yeah. they were just kicking out into the atmosphere yeah. the, best, the best towns. visualization i can give to the listener is if you've seen peaky blinders the first is that's in 1920s birmingham yeah. you just got factories in the next right next door to the residential housing belching yeah. out smoke all, all the towns look cloudy and and grimdark yeah there's not really any sunny to sunny towns is there they, they, no, not at that point yeah because no one's just come to sunny birmingham yeah yeah but then when they go out into the into the rural areas it looks quite nice doesn't it yeah yeah of course it's like oh that's untouched and unspoiled yeah. but well uh, tommy ends up getting like a country house doesn't he that's right yeah, yeah. spoiler <laughs> spoiler um okay then um let's have a what about, um, what about becoming a vampire? Yeah. I mean, obviously, we assume that vampires are real. <laughs> every culture has their vampire myths. Yeah, it's true. Um, there's, with every sort of myth, there's an element of truth, I guess. Yes, I mean, I'm not, yeah, obviously, we're not talking about these goth kids who sleep in a coffin and call themselves Tarquin. No. Nah. Um, we're talking Tarquin. about... Tarquin. <laughs> That's what you went to, Tarquin. Yes. Um, we're talking proper Lord of Evil... Dracula sort of style, yeah. Uh, vampire. They seem too dramatized for me. <laughs> I, I quite like. They, they they come flying down on that with their cloaks. Hey, Dracula in Castlevania. Oh yeah, he's, he's the dude. Yeah, he is pretty cool. To be fair, I yeah. mean, you know, it's the humans who fuck everything up for him. I quite like the underworld vampires. To be fair, yeah, that's that's always been a film of mine that I enjoy with vampires and werewolves. But you know, and, and, and I said, all right, let's just throw werewolves in as well, because in some law, they werewolves can be yeah. in some, in some, yeah, and wizards and magicians and yeah, I quite witches. like. I think we should do a separate podcast on this at some point with like your um, your werewolves and your vampires and all the other sort of um, occult stuff. But um, I would like to be one of those. I think I think I'd prefer a werewolf to be fair. I go for the vampire. Yeah, well, the problem with my my problem with a vampire is usually in most sort of law, you have to be bitten, don't you? Yeah. So it's like they bite you. But so does the same with a werewolf. And then they share, yeah, but they bite you and they share their blood with you and then you become a vampire, don't you? Yeah. But then you don't change after that. That's fine, There's I mean. no physical, yeah, but that means you'll always look the same. Yeah. So. I look good. I, <laughs> I would want to get as shredded as possible before they bit me. <laughs> you could still probably work out. Yeah, but it wouldn't change you. Your body doesn't change. Yeah. It stays the same because you're basically, you're basically undead. You're I suppose so. The heart's not beating, is it? There's yeah. no blood pumping around your yeah. veins. So you'd want to get, you'd be like, wait six months. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back in a bit. Yeah. And just hit the gym so hard. <laughs> Whereas werewolves, they're in some law, they're immortal, but they're still alive. They are. So they, you can you can change. You can get you can be a fat werewolf for, for for ten years. You can be a ripped werewolf for ten years. Yeah, but you've got you can go whole... a mid you can go through a midlife werewolf crisis where you're drinking every day. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. But you got that whole moon thing, and you. Yeah, but I feel like if you've been alive for a thousand years, you'll you learn. You can't stop that. Yeah, but I feel like you'll be able to learn to control the transformation. So you'll still transform, but you won't be this rabid dog sort of no, killing everyone. You'll be like. Just jumping around like in the wild, just having a good time. 
Kenny's howling at the moon. Running with all the other wolves, yeah. yeah. Okay. They chase after this weird werewolf standing up on two legs. <laughs> like, let's follow this guy. He looks like he knows what's going on. <laughs> or they'll just savage you. Yeah, well, they'll try, but I mean, you're a giant werewolf man. You could probably kill a few packs of wolves. Well, yeah, okay. They would instantly probably think he's the alpha now. Yeah, the alpha <laughs> would be like, I'm going to go. Yeah, <laughs> he's in charge. <laughs> just grabs his suitcase. <laughs> Gets his little bindle with yeah. his stick. <laughs> Off he goes. Yeah. Oh, poor wolf. I oh, know. Um, you can come live here with Chloe. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd go down well. <laughs> um, I, I'd still go for the vampire. So something like that, yeah. I could probably go for. Is that because they sleep a lot? Yeah. <laughs> so you just sleep all day, and party all night. Just party all night. Yep. And they have the orgies as well. Yeah, vampire yeah. orgies. Werewolf orgies would probably be better. They'd all be doggy style, though. <laughs> you know, it would just be doggy style. Yeah. Be nothing else. Is that what it'd be? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think if you're going to have sex in werewolf form, that's basically just you being a furry. I don't think you'd have sex in the werewolf form, Why not? would you? Because it's weird. Well, yeah, but you're still it's part of you. That's the thing, though, is the vampire form. It's always on. The werewolf one, you can turn it off. That's yeah. What, that's what I like about well, it. There's a full moon and you're banging. Just don't bang on a full moon. <laughs> well, I like to. <laughs> that's my favourite time <laughs> to do it. Yeah, because I like to believe, I'm, I like to think that I'm uh, giving birth, I'm conceiving the Antichrist. Oh, okay. Do you howl at the moon while you do it? Sometimes, yeah. Usually <laughs> post to, well, well, I orgasm, yeah. <laughs> Trust you to bring it down. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's move on from the occult then. See, uh, have we got okay. another science one? Science. Um, cyborg. Becoming, having bits of your body gradually replaced with machinery. I love this idea. Um, I would love to be a cyborg. Starting with one but, of my but, arms. But, but what's the difference between being a cyborg and, and lo- losing your humanity? Because it's, it's like the flesh is weak. It must be replaced. Because with the other... I didn't have a problem with losing... You're um, the flesh. So when you talked about, uh, say, the stack, putting the stack in the human body or uploading your consciousness into a robot body, I didn't have a problem with the body itself. I would happily live in a robot body. I have a problem with my conscious being copied. Yeah. And I don't think unless you can prove the soul exists and you can physically transport that into a new host body, I don't think that you, you are you anymore. You're just a copy. So therefore, you're dead. So you're not immortal. So whereas with this one, you don't you, your consciousness stays where it is. It's just you're slowly replaced piece by piece. Yeah, but your brain's gonna start giving out. So you're gonna have to replace that at some point, which means you're gonna have to copy your memories, experiences, personality into some kind of digital system to maintain it. Yeah, maybe. So you're still going to end up copying because your your brain will decay, maybe. even if your body is robotic. Maybe if they just they change parts of your body piece by piece by piece, they can change pieces of your brain piece by piece by piece. So mm-hmm. you wouldn't really stop being you until all your brain's gone. Like, yeah, but that's like that could be either very quick or very slow, couldn't it? Well, you'd like to think it'd take hundreds of years. I mean, let's say that you had um. You're getting replaced as a cyborg. You've had your arm done. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden you find out you've got some degenerative brain disease. Yeah. Or what's the first thing you're going to do? Replace it. Replace the pit that's, de- that's degenerating. That's it. Yeah. But for your whole, I'd like to think for your whole brain to need to be replaced, it would take a few hundred years at the very least. Well, I don't know. Because though. you've got pieces of machinery to help it function at, at a higher sort of level than it could without those machines. So that goes for your entire body. So I'd keep my original heart. Would you? Yeah. I'd have a robot one. Yeah. But I'd keep the original one next to it. Why? Um, Just to sort of feel it beat now and again. You'd still feel the robot one beat, though. Yeah, but I want the, the, the organic one to just sort of know at the end, just go... <laughs> 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 ah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> just to remind myself what it's like to be human. I like this one because it's not instant. Like, the one that before is instant. You're instantly dead, and then instantly there's a copy of you. Whereas this one, gradually, you go from existing and being you to being a copy of yourself. So you have time to com- comprehend that eventually you're going to disappear and a copy's going to take over. So you could still live hundreds of years, enjoy your time, create memories, and it's almost like you slowly slip away, and then a new version of you takes over. It's just a, it's a happier way. <laughs> what about RoboCop? He's not a very happy ending. His brain, he kept his brain. Though. He kept the brain. Was, I think all RoboCop is, and I don't quote me on this, I'm pretty sure he's like a head and a spine. He is, yeah. Can um, I be real with you for a second now? What? RoboCop sucks. What, the original? No, not the film. 
the body, it sucks. Oh yeah, but it wasn't you know 1988. Yeah, give it so, a chance. Yeah, so that that wouldn't happen, would it? You'd, your robot, your robot body would look pretty much. If you had that kind of technology, it would look pretty much the same as what we have now, unless you wanted it to look souped up in some way. Well, I think that, yeah, like, want, you know, he's pimped a my arm. <laughs> he's a ro- he's a robo carp. I mean, he's got to look intimidating. Yeah, but and he's got to be bulletproof. He can barely walk. He can walk. <laughs> In number three, he can when he, fly. When he turns his head, he's like, mm, he like he needs oil for it. <laughs> when he's only the, he's the first one. And he's shit. They're gonna refine the design. And he's shit. They're gonna refine it, man. But you would you'd like to live, think you'd live in a time when the technology would be that advanced that you could basically have a human version of your arm, a human version of your leg it would look almost identical unless you wanted it to not look identical or if the non-identical machine part was cheaper you mean so like um like when i in terminator 2 when arnie peels the skin off his arm yeah it looks like an arm it's still it's like basically the, the skeletal structure just made of steel yeah but then it's whatever. got a synthetic skin and over. it's got the synthetic skin see i go for that yeah but you know, obviously, you I mean, if I'm turning into some kind of... I mean, you can make yourself into any form you wanted. You can give yourself spider legs if you wanted you to. Could, yeah. I mean, that would be pretty sweet. No, I don't think you'd pick spider. You don't like spiders. No, but I might go for some kind of scorpion-style thing going scorpion. on. Scorpion. <laughs> scorpion man. Yeah, maybe some kind of tail. Yeah. Six legs. Why? Why not? Just to be intimidating yep. to all your enemies. And then, you know, I can just swap back into another body, can't I? Well, you could change your parts, yeah. I change your parts? Yeah. So you just... After you've... Like scared all of the uh, random civilians. Yeah. With your Scorpio body, you just laugh your way home, change your arms and legs. Yeah. And then go about your business as normal. Go through my like um, Tony Stark Iron Man suit removal device. And remember, go, the, sh- remember these parts would be very expensive initially. Well, at this point, I mean, I can afford to become a cyborg. <laughs> you know, I don't think money's an issue at this point. <laughs> I think you'd probably just save up and just do one piece of your body at a time, though, wouldn't you? Let's remember though that. This stuff, all of this, all the science stuff, yeah, is going to be for the super rich. Yeah, well, eventually, it's not going to be for the likes of you and I. Eventually, it would be. Eventually, I don't think they'd let. Eventually, it'd be available to everybody. I don't know, man. Yeah, because costs come down. It's like cell phones. No, not everyone. Are, cell how long? phones. We're not American. It's a mobile. No, there's a lot of American listeners. I don't care. It's a mobile <laughs> phone, not a cell <laughs> a phone. A mobile phone. It's a mobile phone. A mobile phone, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get back to my point, <laughs> is how long was it before you got a mobile phone? Well, I, well, After they came out? Um, I don't know. Um, it's difficult to say. I remember my dad having the very one of the very first ones. Yeah. How long was it before? It you must have been one? a good five or six years after that. Easy. Yeah. I think he must have had it when I was about 10, 11. Yeah. Had an aerial the size of a CB radio mast. Yeah. And why do you think that was? Well, because they were expensive and clunky and they were big. Yeah. My nephew, ha- he's like 11 and he has a phone now. A phone that's better than mine. So things it's an become- iPhone. <laughs> 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 no, it's like the one up from my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's one of those Chinese spyware ones. It's still better than your phone. <laughs> it's not. So yeah, my point was, is things become cheaper. They is do. That when technology becomes, stops becoming new technology and starts, yeah, so yes, you have a point. When this technology comes out, if it comes out in our lifetime, we might not be able to see it but in 100 years time everyone will have one every single person will have one if they break an arm and they they get some sort of infection or they're born without a leg they'll just get a robotics in will smith i robot yeah you can't even tell can you no and that's what it'll look like and that'll be available to everyone so i think he loses in a car crash doesn't he yeah that's right yeah so anything like that that happens replaceable and it'll be cheap enough it'll probably even be for americans it'll be on their health insurance Oh, I don't know about that. It probably will be. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a long, long, long time. Why? When you've got when you've got cyborg Trump trotting around for two hundred years, then you might get it. Yeah, but that kind of stuff would already be on the health insurance now. I don't. That's what health insurance is for. Yeah, but you'd be paying a huge premium, <laughs> wouldn't you? No, usually your monthly payment would be obscene. Usually, uh, most health insurances are covered by the company you work for. If. So like uh, that's some what, do. That's some what don't. happens in a lot of companies do. That's what happens in iRobot. I is he has health insurance? He's a cop. That's why. Yeah. So he has health insurance. That's what a lot of. That's what a lot of. Uh, some people... firms will. But if the firm starts to make a loss, one of the first things to go usually is the health. Yeah, insurance. but in America, most of them do have it. Yeah. More more do than don't. 
most most people have private health care in America. It's covered by their company. It, it probably makes up a large portion of the country, to be fair. I had a thought so. Let us know, American listeners. <laughs> Um, okay, so cyborgs. I go for the cyborg, I must admit. Yeah. Um, like you said, it eventually... Well, I'm sure you're going to become a copy. Yeah, eventually. Well, you kind of do and you don't because it's almost like you could argue that you are sharing what will become the copy. So it's almost like if, if say, there is a soul, that version of you would stay because you, you're still there while the copy's being generated. Yeah. So, but that, that's when you start going into philosophy sort of territory. That's it. And we already did the, the debate on is there a soul? But if there was, then you would argue that it's it's still there. So it's just found its way into that new sort of host. But it, it, again, then that makes it sound like your soul's a parasite. <laughs> it might well be. It didn't need to because with the car, with the one we talked about earlier, you'd have to find a way to transfer it from one one host to another. Whereas this one, it's still in its host. It's just the host has changed it over time. Yeah, I guess so. But again, that would mean that there would need to be a soul, and we have no way of proving that that exists. So, like you said, it would probably just be a copy, sadly. You'd end up being a copy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Another That's... occult one? Um, the Fountain of Youth. The Fountain of Youth. Now, obviously, the Fountain of Youth has been sought after for many, many a century. And I've clearly found it. I mean, look at me. Where is it? I'm not going to tell you. How come you look so old? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look incredible. <laughs> I haven't aged in 10 years. Yeah, it's because you look 40. <laughs> <laughs> and you're only 28. <laughs> I think we both don't. I don't look 40. One of us looks 40, and it ain't me. Well, I don't look 40. No, you look 45. <laughs> <laughs> I look 20 at most. Oh, please, you're not 20. I look 20. You don't look 20. You would have guessed 20. I wouldn't have. Yeah, you would have. Uh, I wouldn't have. <laughs> um, you would have look at him. He's an Adonis. He's got to be only about 20. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the fountain of youth. Yeah, you get in the fountain. You're unaged. Do you drink it, or do you have to swim in it? I think you have to swim in it. Or is it a combination of both? Maybe it's a combination of both. Yeah. So that's something. Um... Sometimes if you try and drink it, it's really salty. You're like, I just can't drink it. <laughs> you're like, can I suck just, it up. <laughs> you're like, can I just bathe in it? And like, nah, nah. Sorry, you've got to. It's 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 like you've got to swim and drink at the same time, or it doesn't work. And he's like, but it's super salty though. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to get some kind of desalinizer in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like, yeah, sorry, the last guy was super sweaty. <laughs> oh, man. yeah, there's a massive, there was, there was like a fat bloke in there before you. Yeah. He was just there doing laps, getting all sweaty. <laughs> oh, it was the middle of summer. There's actually, a film on top of the water. Yeah. Oh. So we don't really clean this like very often. It was really sunny when he was here. <laughs> he got real sweaty. He came in sweaty. He was eating an ice cream. Yeah. There's a bit of ice cream still in there. Oh, if you don't mind fishing that out. I think he may have took a dump in it. There's like a turd bobbing. <laughs> right, so if you just go ahead and drink that, it'll be, you'll be immortal. It'll be fine. Yeah, I'm still drinking it. Oh, <laughs> not going to fish it out first. Well, I'll fish the turd out first. <laughs> um, actually, on a, on a similar one to that, bathing in stuff, yeah. um, bathing in virgin's blood. That's creepy. Um, Kem- Elizabeth Bathory, the oh god, I can't remember. She was on the top of my head. He's Eastern Europe, a countess. Yeah. Um, they reckon she killed dozens of uh, peasant virgins, girls, yeah. bathed in their blood, and apparently she didn't age. That's that creepy much. and definitely wouldn't work. And the, uh, the stories say that she didn't age. Yeah. Until they locked her up behind a brick wall and she died. Exactly. Yeah. Because <laughs> she was insane. <laughs> well, yeah, she was clearly a lunatic. Yeah, that makes no sense at but all. Bathing in virgins' blood. Might work. Even if it did work, I wouldn't do it. You'd be hard pressed to find a fucking virgin round here. That's what <laughs> I think. <laughs> no, I just wouldn't do it because it's morally wrong. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know. You're like immortality. <laughs> Sometimes you have to break the rules. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, let's say medically curing death. Okay. So that could be. Either A, treatment to stop you aging. Yeah. So B, um, preserving your brain. Yeah. I think the, the definition of that would be that um, like diseases that can be cured now, mm. they just basically they find a way to kind of grasp the fact that death is just another disease. It's like the ultimate disease. Yeah. And they find a way to cure it, kind of like with an antidote. So mm. they give you a medicine and you just stop aging. 
That'd be interesting. Yeah. I forgot to take my anti-aging pills. He's like become a wizened old man in a place of two days. Well, I don't think it'd work <laughs> like that. I don't think it'd work like that. I think just from the second you start taking those tablets within 48 hours, because it didn't take a while to get into your bloodstream, it just stops the aging process. And for as long as you keep taking them, you don't age. The second you stop taking them, you start aging again. I think you should become immediately like an old man. Just like time. Like, no, time is against me. You start shrinking and punching over and wrinkles. No, I need to get a prescription. (laughs) Well, that would be the problem, wouldn't it? You could just charge so much money for those pills. Well, of course. Yeah. You're selling selling eternal life for the low, low price of, of nine quid on the NHS. Yeah, so you could either you could either do that, or there'd have to be just one one sort of, I guess, vaccination serum that they inject into your body, and then that's it. It just it, it cures death indefinitely. Or you end up like in future armor, where you're a head in a jar. Yeah, I mean, no one says you've got to have a body to live forever. That's true. Head yeah. in a jar, thrown out there. Yeah. All right then, uh, one of my personal favorites. Yeah. Um, being born a mortal, like in Highlander. Yeah. Love that movie. The that, first movie. That not, would not be the rest. Yeah, I have not seen the rest. But then of. again, you can die still if you get your head cut off. Yeah. So, so you're not invulnerable. Reason. Just not live invul- forever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you lose a limb that that'll grow back. Yeah. They don't bring attention to that in the movies. I'd imagine you're probably mortal in every way except for the aging process doesn't work. Yeah, they seem to get to a certain point and stop aging. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, that first movie is fucking awesome. Yeah, I've seen the first one. I've not seen any of the others. You know the guy that plays the Kurgan? Mm. Yeah. You know, he's the he's in Spongebob. He plays Mr. Crab. Oh, really? Yeah, no, Clancy no. Jones, I think yeah, his name is. Yeah. yeah, he's a good actor, he is. He is, but you, you wouldn't know. He's like, he was the Kurgan, and then I didn't seem to see him in anything for ages, and then all of a sudden he was in loads of stuff. Yeah, it was he in... Um, he was in The Punisher. Was It was he in Space Force. Was he in Space Force? Oh, well, he may have been. Yes, he was. He was really? the uh, Marine guy, yeah, Marine he, General. I think he might have been. Yeah. Yeah. He had a massive part, though. Yeah. He was in the Punisher as well. Yeah. So the Punisher series. Bring that back. Yeah. But yeah. I think they are going to, to be fair. Good, they need to. Um, so, yeah, being born a more... Well, I love that idea. Some genetic quirk. Yeah. Maybe some kind of magic with a yeah. K going on. I love that idea, but um, it's lo- highly unlikely, seen as me and you were still aging, that, that that's not happening. No, I'm just saying that, you know, yeah. Yeah, well, I, you've got to have the quickening, remember? Well, what I'm saying is uh, I prescribe to that idea. I'd like it, but I think we've already gone past that point. <laughs> well, you know, the emperor of mankind perpetual kind of business. Yeah. He does, li- they, the perpetuals in that universe do literally heal from anything. Oh, okay. You could be burnt alive and then a couple of hours later you just heal. Yeah. And then you That'd die. be useful. That would be handy. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd go for that. Yeah. But then again, the chances of that ever happening are very, very low. Yeah. Um, okay, then. What about um, having kids? Yeah. So That's it, probably one of the few ways you can gain the, immortality in a way. This has been sort of how human beings have, have attain, obtained immortality all throughout history and uh, are still doing it, aren't they? This is what we're genetically wired to do. It's the only way we can seek immortality, isn't it? We pass on our genetic code. That's it. We to, pass on our genes. Yeah. We pass on our... Um, you know, our quirks, our yeah. certain personality traits are passed down. Yeah. I mean, it's weird how much stuff does get passed it down, is, in all fairness. There's literally, there's there's something in our brains that tells us we need to pass on that genetic code. To, uh, and we know for a while that there's a, a beginning and an end to us. So we feel the need to pass it on, pass on what makes us, us. And that's it. And remember that, you know, we sat here at the culmination of many, many, many generations. Yeah of shared genetic material culminating in us. Yeah. And when you think about it, that is absolutely fucking mind-boggling. It is. When you see people do those um, ancestry sort of how much DNA they've got, and they've got like 1% of this and 1% of that and 20% of this and 20% of that, and you're like, wow, they are literally made up from people all over the world. Yeah, well, remember, we're all African originally. Yeah, and then it, and then it's crazy when you're sat there and you think, well, fucking hell, my, my parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents haven't left this country their entire life. So how far back has it gone that these people have been able to travel all over the world and meet each other and then you've ended up, how amazing is it that you've ended up here? Yeah. You could have ended up anywhere because those people have traveled all over and found each other, had kids, and then that kid has moved somewhere else. 
That's and it. And it all ends up and it culminates with you here. When you think of the amount of chance that you have been born. Yeah, you could have been it, born anywhere, essentially. You could have been born anyone yeah. or anywhere. Yeah. And you wouldn't be you. You'd yeah. be someone else. And that fucks my head. Yeah, it's crazy. Completely. It is crazy. But I think having kids, of all these things that we've got, I think that's probably the one that's most obtainable to the likes yeah, of you and I. It's what humans have always strived to do and will continue to strive to do for a long time. Well, it's like... Um... I mean, eventually, yes, you will be forgotten. Yeah. You know, as soon as the sort of great great grandkids are there, yeah, you're you're out of living memory at that point. Yeah, usually unless you did something amazing. Yeah, but no, like your your say so great great grandkids, so your sons, yeah, your daughter, your kids, 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 yeah, you're not going to be alive for that unless yeah. of course you put your head in a jar. Yeah, um, sort of four or five generations down yeah. the line. You're yeah. not going to be in living memory. No. No, I don't know. Like I said, if you've done something great, people always remember if you've done something great, don't they? And then they start talking about, oh, my great, 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 great granddad had fought in the war or whatever. So if you've done any, he, he saved like 15 people or whatever, you know, that sort of stuff is remembered. But yeah, if, they, if you didn't really achieve anything amazing, then usually you've, you've, you've forgotten over time. Yeah. That's why people do these online ancestry things, don't they? Yeah, I tried to do that, but I refused to pay for it. <laughs> You're like, I really want to know, but I'm also too cheap to know. Yeah. <laughs> I've always fancied doing one of the DNA tests. So, you know, you, they just send you the kit and you take yeah. the swab of your mouth and send it back. But I don't like the idea of someone, A, having my DNA and B... Just in case they clone you. Just in case they clone me. I mean, do just, you want an army of Bens not destroying really. the world? One's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Be like Oblivion when like they clo- or the aliens cloned Tom Cruise. Yeah. There was an army of Tom Cruises that destroyed the human race. I'm sure plenty of people didn't mind there being an army of Tom Cruises. I'm sure people wouldn't mind there being an army of me. Mm. <laughs> Tom Cruise, you. Tom Cruise, you. <laughs> I'm not a crazy Scientologist. Mm, you're also not an awesome like action star. How would you know? Maybe I just never had my chance. <laughs> that makes pretty good movies. How would you know I've never had my chance? <laughs> I mean... You don't know. I could be an awesome actor. Make a movie then, man. All right. And we'll watch it. Okay. <laughs> I'll make I'll, I'll make Highlander 5. Highlander 5. <laughs> You're going to be like, ah! <laughs> Running around with your sword. Yeah. Cutting <laughs> people's heads off. Yeah. And you'll end up in the news. <laughs> then I end up in jail. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone will remember me. <laughs> <laughs> As the crazy guy that I lived with. <laughs> yeah. Think of the money you could make. I could write a book. There you go. Yeah. I always knew he was going to do it one day. Yeah. <laughs> You'd see him every day, slowly, getting closer and closer to snapping. You just have to tip him over the edge. Yeah, which I did. Yeah. Um, what about spells and magic or the Philosopher's Stone? I quite like the idea of Philosopher's Stone. Again, I don't I don't believe in any of the kind of occult ways of, of finding immortality. But I do like the idea of it. Alchemists were trying to find the well, find or create the Philosopher's Stone, weren't they? For a very, very long time. Yeah, Newton had a stab at that. Yeah. Isaac Newton, Sir Isaac Newton. Yeah, so if, if enough intelligent people thought that it could exist, it's always a possibility. It's almost like it goes from the realms of sort of occulty and uh, well, stuff yeah. into science, essentially. It is, and both things were frowned upon by the church at the time, so yeah. most of these, this stuff was done underground. Yeah. Um, you know, circles of um, intellectuals gathering to try and make... Because it wasn't the Philosopher's Stone you could, like, do anything with it. I think so. It wasn't yeah. just like a mortal life. It was like turning lead into gold. It was like a power it was, stone. It was like a, a yeah. It was like a power Thanos. stone. Yeah. Panos, it's like, power it's like stone. giving the infinity gauntlet. Yeah, it's getting one of the gems anyway. Well, I think the, the whole gauntlet because I mean you just got unlimited power there. Mate. I don't know if it's unlimited. I think it just gives you more power than you already have. But the infinity gauntlet makes Thanos immortal. I think it does. Yeah, mm, that's handy. Yeah. Basically yeah. makes him a god, doesn't it? So you're going to wear that fucking glove all the time, though, aren't you? I think he takes it off when he's not kicking ass. I hope so. Yeah. In the film, it's kind of shit because the gauntlet hurts him. Yeah. Whereas in the comics, it doesn't hurt him. In it the... hurts everyone in the movie. Yeah. Well, it cripples Hulk, doesn't it? He loses yeah. his arm. He doesn't lose his arm. He's all fucking burnt up, though, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, but he's basically lose, lost his arm. He can't move it. I don't yeah, think... you Do you think... see him move it? I don't think you yeah, see him yeah I think by the end, he's fighting again, isn't he? Not with that arm. The arm's in a sling. I thought he'd be fighting with that arm. No, I think battle. he's in, in a sling. You, I don't recall Hulk doing much in that fight. No, he Hulk. basically just saves a few people. So, like, the building falls, and I think he catches the building. But you don't really see him fight much. No, you don't, do yeah. you? 
need to watch the end of that movie again. Mm -hmm. Awesome fight scene. It is pretty good. It's it's not as good as the as the first one, Infinity. Um, Infinity War. War. Yeah. yeah. Um. Actually, I I, I got um, Mike to watch. You know, Mike, the, the one of the co-hosts, one of my co-hosts from Queen of the Ball. Yeah. I got him to watch because I was like, look, I want you to watch these movies. They're like yeah. seminal movies of our time. Yeah. You may not like it, but they're actually pretty good. They, they are. are good movies. You go watch good. them. And he really liked Infinity War. Yeah. So he really liked, um, yeah, Infinity War. Um, he did not like Endgame. I, I agree with him. End, to be, I agree with him completely. It's a glorified heist movie. The end is really good. Um, there is a few good scenes in the film, but. Um, for the first sort of hour and a half, it's just like a glorified heist movie where these superheroes are meant to be the best of the best are sneaking around and running around to try and steal these gems. Yeah, because it's time travel, man. Yeah, because it's a heist movie. It's, mm. it's literally, it's it's not that good. I like a good heist Infinity movie. Infinity War, literally, when I watched it in the cinema, I was like, this is one of the best films I've ever seen in my entire life. It's incredible in every single way. And then the next the next one, is just, I, I picked so many flaws with it. And they're, they're, the way they explain time travel as well, it was almost like, we can't be bothered to explain the science behind it because there's conflicting science right now. So what we'll do is go, just roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> they literally just say in the film, just roll with it. And you're like, mm, I don't think I can roll with it. It's kind of taking me out of the movie now. Either pick pick a lane and stick to it or just don't explain it at all. <laughs> and just, we'll roll with it that way. Don't say, roll with it. <laughs> I enjoyed how Tony Stark went down to his garage one night and accidentally invented time travel. That was yeah. quite humorous. It's like, wait, what? So you've never thought of doing this before? Yeah. Well, he was. He was trying to work it out for years. But yeah, then he, but then... He, just, he gave up. Yeah. And then somebody came and, and talked to him and he just... He, he, I think they helped him or something. He just clicked, didn't he? Mm. Um, anyway, so magic, spells, Rosper Stone... Obviously, none of that is, well, proven. Proven, Spells maybe. and magic with a K, remember, yeah. not stage magic with a C. You're looking at symbols, spells, uh, sigils, things like that. People believe in it, and yeah. I think that if enough people believe in something, then maybe it can be true. Unless it's religion. Because <laughs> you, you, you're all for the aliens and for the... Uh... Or, and the occult stuff, but not the religion. <laughs> because organised religion is one of the worst things humanity has ever put upon itself. Yeah, but it's basically the same concept, though, isn't it? Yeah, sadly, it is all a religion. See, I prefer the odd, you know, the old weirdos and live in a cave and do magic. Yeah. That kind of, like an old mad druid living in a cave. Well, a lot of religions started out that way. Well, yeah, that's true. Book of Revelations was written by yeah, a fucking they, mad dude on an island. They, they just, just built up over time. The only difference is, is one got a massive following and the other didn't. Yeah, so you thought of it marketing. Yeah, you're like, I like to, I like to go with not the, the main crowd. <laughs> I like my weird shit to be uh, very non-mainstream. <laughs> I have a problem with with stuff like paganism, modern paganism, and, yeah. and Wicca because it's another podcast we should do. It's it's basically druid. Modern paganism was invented in like 1926. Mm -hmm. So it's no bearing at all to the ancient druidic tradition. Yeah. Which is no one knows what that was because the druids never wrote anything down. Yeah. It was... Um, that was what, the whole point of them. They what did they, it amongst themselves. Yeah, what did they say on um, Castlevania about the, um, those, the, the, the speakers? Oh, it's an oral tradition. It's an oral, that's it. It's an oral tradition. No, yeah. no one knows any of the information because they pass it all down orally, don't they? That's speak. It. And it's not written down. Yeah, they because, speak their history. They because pass of, it from person to person. Yeah, because an oral tradition can be flexible. Yeah. It yeah. Can, the story can change. It can evolve. It can mm -hmm. adapt. There's much different versions of it. That's what makes it so rich. As yeah, if you, you write something it... down, it becomes dogmatic. It becomes fixed. Yeah. People argue over it before you know it. They're killing each other about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. To shoot it. We'll have to do paganism. Yes. We'll add that to the list. Uh, coming soon. All right, then. Yeah, name your sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> it's out on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> right, next one. Um, last one is gaining immortality through your accomplishments and deeds. So you might have a statue of you, buildings named after you, streets named after you, your name living on that way. So your body's dead, but the memories of what you did will live on. Yeah, I like that idea. I um I like to think is um time is like a time and our, our sort of how we perceive it and also how we perceive human beings is like uh, it's like a wall it's like a brick wall and sort of the cement or if you really zoom in on it it's like pieces of sand 
yeah. people like you and this is going to be a bit sad for me and you people like me and you are like those little grains of sand the little grains of cement that make yeah, up the mixture the, yeah the little grains of sand within that mm. sort of cement that make up the mixture and then every now and then there's a brick <laughs> and, and that's, that's someone who's solidified in history in human history solidified yeah. in time so and they don't always have to be good Hitler's one of those bricks. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes true. Winston Churchill's one of those bricks, and they are people that everyone knows the names of. Kim Kardashian's one of those bricks. Oh, Unfortunately, Kanye West is one of those bricks. Yeah, you're right. But I mean, that's, for as long as there is humanity, or someone turning up to look over the ruins of humanity, yeah, they're going to look at a statue of you or I and go, "Wow, that dude must have done something." Yeah, and it's got our name underneath it. Yeah, and maybe they'll go, "Hmm." We could, maybe we could use our alien tech to bring this dude to life again. See what he did. Yeah. Who knows? Yours will just say, drank more beers. Maybe it won't have an ending like than anyone else. We'll <laughs> just say, drank more beers. Like, hey, we want to party with that guy. <laughs> It'll be open ended. It'll just say, drank more beers. <laughs> <laughs> it's up for interpretation. <laughs> I just think I I've always said I would be the first man on Mars. Yeah. If it was a one way trip or not, I would do it because I've been writing my own check to immortality. Yeah. Everybody would know who I was. Yeah. Same as everyone would know who Neil Armstrong is. Well, that's the thing. You can make that happen, or you can have that opportunity, but it both ways are very difficult. So make it as in you were kind of like Hitler did. He made that happen. But then sometimes you have opportunity as well. So say, um, some like you said, somebody's obviously you made it happen. You were one of the the sort of astronauts picked to go to Mars. But you were literally like, right, I'm going to train so hard and be the best astronaut. So they let me be the first on Mars. Yeah. Sort of like they did with Neil Armstrong. Yeah, that's it. I'm yeah. not sure they drew lots for that or it was decided. I can't remember. Yeah, so if it was either chose because of his accomplishments, because he was the best man for the job or because of luck, because he drew a lot. But he worked hard to get to the point where he could draw that lot. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. It is literally one of those two reasons is why these people get turned into these sort of, as I said, bricks. And you can see that with anyone, whether they're famous, they're a celebrity, or they're a sort of person in history. Like uh, Genghis Khan's a great example of this. Yeah. He's um, really, I mean, he's no more special than any other man. You could say he was more proficient than, than most, if all men, I guess, in combat. But there's men all throughout history that were known for combat, but they weren't also good leaders. And yet he conquered a significant amount of the, of the planet. And he did that because he was such a good leader and he had so many opportunities and he literally carved that sort of space in history for himself. Yeah. I mean, well, that's it. I mean, uh, I think it was easier in the past yeah. to carve your name in history. Well, there's less people. Yeah, but I mean... More opportunities to do that. Yeah, that's it. I mean, nowadays, obviously, things are more civilised and... Yeah, there's not as much war. Not as much war. The world is run on capitalism instead of warfare and who can take what from what. Resource-based economies. Yeah. Although it's not a resource-based economy because that's Star Trek, but you know. Yeah. But um, the, the, the way the world is run now, whether you like it or not, because I know you're not a fan of capitalism, but whether you like it or not, it's much better than, say, just running into the next person's tribe, killing half the tribe and taking all of their stuff and their women. So it's a lot more civilised. I don't know. <laughs> you're like, I, I'm more for that. That does appeal to my de Viking roots. Yeah. It's all of a sudden I feel this stirring in my loins and chest. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to get my axe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it is literally, that. That's the thing, isn't it, is it's it's in a lot of people. Obviously, not everyone has that opportunity or has the skill, but it's in everyone to want to leave that sort of, that stone, that rock yeah, in time. Yeah, I want to be a brick. Yeah. I think everyone wants to be a brick. Yeah, and that's hard because there, is, there isn't that opportunity for everyone. So you might be more intelligent, uh, more skilled in every way than than the person that gets remembered, and it's just because they were in the right place at the right time. Because that always plays a part. Yeah, being you in know. the right place at the right time is. And, cool. and I know I've mentioned Hitler twice already, but Hitler is. He's not... a bit of a Hitler thing going on. No, I was he's just... a bit of a side parting going on as well. I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh <Yeah>. man, <laughs> Hitler was not the worst guy ever. There's been people a lot worse than him that have killed a lot more people. Stalin killed more people. He did. And yet Hitler, when anyone thinks of him, they think of him as the most evil man in all throughout history. Yeah. When yeah, you'd argue he's up there, wouldn't you? He is definitely up there, but he's not number one. There's been men that have caused far worse atrocities than him. 
We don't have any people Genghis Khan's forces put to the sword. Oh, I don't know, to be fair, because there wouldn't have been a lot of people back then. No, but I mean, it was they were at it for quite a while, weren't they? Probably I mean, a he few... conquered most of Russia, didn't he? Yeah, probably a few uh, million. They got, they got all the way to Poland, virtually. Yeah. We well, should not... do one on the Mongolian Empire. That would yeah. be a good one. Cause, and, and Napoleon, actually. That would be another good one. Napoleon's overrated. <laughs> No, he is, in my, my, my opinion. I mean, I'm, Didn't he I'll, take over like a quarter of the globe or something stupid no. like that? He took, over, he took over a lot of countries. France, Germany, some of the German states, Poland, north of Italy, yeah. Spain. I mean, it's nothing to be sneezed at. Yeah. But in terms of um, strategy, he was very sort of one-dimensional, really. It was like, right, um, yeah, he was very good at moving mem- numbers of troops to specific areas. Yeah. But in terms of what he did with them, then he just used his soldiers like a battering ram. Yeah. And against lesser trained armies and conscript armies, that works. Yeah. But when he met the redcoats, the British army, who, who were professionals and yeah. trained with live ammunition to fire three to four rounds a minute. Yeah. A column of infantry isn't going to stand up to that. Yeah. I think well, he bragged once that he had an his he had an income of eighty thousand men a year. Yeah. That's how because he introduced conscription. Yeah. That's how much he could get a year, eighty thousand. Yeah. So well, you can lose eighty. He said, I'm, "I can lose eighty men, eighty thousand men a year." Yeah, that's not how you. No, go it's not. It's not. But the, you've just didn't hit the nail on the head there, haven't you? You've literally just said that's not a good leader, and that's not how you should rule an army. Yet he did, because yeah. he was in the right place at the right time. He was good enough, or at least he did enough to be considered good enough. Well, yes. I mean, in, in times of revolution and upheaval, then yeah. some people, ambitious men yeah. and women, and that always plays a part. I think that of their place yeah. in history. I think that plays the biggest thing, the biggest part in it. You have to be ambitious. You have to have a, a drive that most human beings just aren't born with. And if you have that drive, you you not always, not always, you, you're not always going to have that opportunity to be sort of find your place in history, but. You have to have that drive. If you don't have that drive, that sort of indomitable will, then it's not just not yeah. going to happen for you. All these great people, all throughout history, inventors, scientists, warriors, leaders, politicians, anyone you remember, no one ever sat there and said they were a weak, boring person. They were all interesting. They were all intelligent, or they were strong, or they were fast, or there was something special about. I them. think they all have um, elements of self doubt, though. Yeah, but you need that. You need to be constantly questioning yourself. But you need to have that sort of that lion focus, that sort of... Yeah, um, remember that most of the people who are celebrated, though, came from very wealthy backgrounds and had all the advantages in life. There was then a personal thing, but, um, and them being in the right place at the right time. I disagree um, with Napoleon that. Napoleon was from a reasonably well-off family. Yeah. He was educated at a military school. Yeah. It was the fact that there was the French Revolutionary Wars going on yeah. that allowed this young gunnery lift lieutenant to mm-hmm. end up being Emperor of France. I disagree with that. I think a lot of people throughout history made their names and they came from nothing as well. Who? Well, I'm, and I'm not a <laughs> history buff. I'm not, well, I've, I've not literally got the information there to read it off. Well, I'll tell you what, go on, that's your mission. Find someone who came from... Well, there are people who've come from nothing and made it yeah. up. The majority of people who rule us have always been from the upper Yeah, classes. I didn't say whoever ruled us. I said people that carved out... That, that wasn't my point. I said yeah, people okay, that yeah. carved out their names in history. They they came from nothing. A lot of singers now, they're carving... Oh, well, yeah, names. okay, I'll they're, give you that. They're yeah. carving the names out of history. Yeah, I'll give you that. So, yeah, you... They'll be remembered. Leaders usually are because they come from... They literally... Most countries are controlled by the rich and they literally just pass it on. And even though monarchy is gone in a lot of countries, it's just an elitist monarchy now, a rich monarchy. Even now, we were talking about this the other day. Everyone in Labour, who was meant to be the the party for the working class, they're all career politicians now, or a large majority of them are career politicians now, the ones that are in charge of things. And that's always going to be the same. But in terms of carving out your name for history, a lot of people, scientists, a lot of well-known scientists, they came from nothing. True. True. So... Right, well, my point has been... But I can't think of a name off the top of my head. Mm. Famous runners... I mean, I, I'm Usain Bolt. Everyone knows who he is. That's He's true. carved yeah, his name, fastest true. man alive, and well, was fastest man alive. And um, he he was he came from a poor country, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was Jamaican. Yeah, I think he had fairly humble origins. Yeah, but yeah. to get back to our main point, and I think this is my closing point. I don't know what yours is, but um, I think that immortality can never really truly be achieved. I think all you can do is prolong the inevitable. And when you whether you live for a thousand years, a hundred thousand years, a millennia eventually it all has to end 
whether that be the universe ends and you're there to see it end or something destroys you, a black hole sucks you up and you're, you're eviscerated. Yeah, but then you just reheal. <laughs> yeah, but you you wouldn't because you'd be just constantly destroyed by the uh, black yeah. hole, wouldn't yeah, you? that'd suck. So you probably, well, you probably wouldn't feel it, to be fair, because you'd be destroyed probably quicker than you could heal. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, science can only take us so far, I'd imagine. Yeah, black yeah, holes yeah, probably, yeah. Uh, probably smash science, mm. human science, to be fair. So I honestly don't think... That man can ever truly obtain a, eternity because eternity is really a false idea. It's a long really. time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> eternity, impl- eternity, eternity implies there's no end when there's yep. always got to be an end. Whether the if that means we wait till the universe dies or the world dies or something dies, everything everything stops eventually, and that includes us. And that's a scary thought, but. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty much it. So extended oh, yeah. life, I like the idea. I wouldn't mind living for a few hundred years or maybe a thousand years. The problem you got with that is there's not that much. Yeah, you know, we're, we're approaching overpopulation in the next I don't know hundred years as it is. Yeah, well we were just we at that point. At that point you could get just we would colonize. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we we would literally we've conquered death. So what else is just to stop us? Yeah, we might as well band together and stop fighting over resources and go, look, we are running out of resources, but we have conquered death. So the two main things we fight over is wanting to preserve life and also resources. Now we can preserve life. Let's go and find more resources. Mm. Let's use our collective of knowledge. And then we would then obviously move on to like a type one civilization or type two or whatever it is. Jesus, that's a long way. Yeah. Well, that would move up the time scale, wouldn't it? Because we'd all focus on one thing instead of fighting over resources, which is what most of us do. Yeah. I personally, um, medically, I think we'll get something where we can extend our lives probably in the next 20, 30 years, probably. Um, I think the best bet for, for your average Joe at the moment is, Either A, having children and living, being immortal that way and passing on your genetic heritage, or, you know, making something of yourself and getting your name in the history books. Yeah. Or a statue. Yeah. Um, hopefully not for being a racist because they'll get torn down. Yeah. But, you know, something like that. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the, the only way you... Because, let's face it, um, if even if you are... Also, just to interrupt you, if you're going to rip down a statue, don't rip it down when if there's a person underneath it. That's also a valid point. <laughs> so just a head. <laughs> I don't. I shouldn't say just a heads up. Actually, that was insensitive. <laughs> but yeah, don't pull a statue down and make it land on another person that's trying to help you pull that statue down. Don't do that. That's not the best thing to do. <laughs> make sure there's nobody about when you pull a yeah. statue down. I always like it when they pulled the sedan ones, dude, and yeah. everyone's like hitting it with their shoe. Yeah. I always remember that. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, oh man, they were so happy. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> country yeah. stayed in their country for too long, I guess. And then they had ISIS. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Um. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think that sums it up, really. Yeah. Um. So. Would you like to be immortal? I love it. Would yeah. you? Would you do any of them or all of them? Um. I would prefer to be like born immortal or get that power at some yeah. point. Yeah. Um. The or, quickening. Or maybe have it cured. Have death cured. Or have death cured, but I, I kind of, I'd kind of like to be a bit special. Yeah. I mean, I am special. Everyone wants to be special. So. You're not the kind of special you want to no, be. There, no, no, that's <laughs> it. Um, but I think that, yeah, if I was like, all of a sudden I'm out walking about and then I get the quickening, I get hit by lightning and all of a sudden, like, oh, oh, oh. All of a sudden I can like, because it's not just the immortality, you can like, oh man, it's almost like you've got a, some kind of an extra sensory power. Yeah. Um. Then yeah, I go for that. Yeah, but nah. Other than that, yeah. You know what? Just throw me in the trash. <laughs> throw me dark. in the trash. That's dark, man. I uh, I think we should call it a day. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, I've been Ben. Thanks for listening. Uh. Don't drink the flavor aid. Don't join a cult. And listen to Cutting to the Bull in the Post Truth Apocalypse. And I've been Sean. Thanks for listening. Follow us on Facebook and follow them on Facebook as well. Yes. <laughs> Do that. Yeah, because I don't think they ever ask you to. We do sometimes. Yeah, follow them on Facebook and anything else they're on. Do you remember the social dilemma episode yeah. the, the social network? You're like, oh, no, follow us on and Facebook. I like, yes, I started the show by saying, like, I, I, before anyone says anything, I am fully aware of the irony of using social media to promote, my, to promote ourselves. Now, please follow us on no, Facebook. Follow us on Facebook. Because <laughs> <laughs> we are all addicts. <laughs> yes, we are. But, yeah, thanks for listening.